All right, how's it going, YouTube? It's Al Strong 59. So, after I realized my first shoot that my head was cut off, so I had to redo it. So, I'm Alex Chalmers 59. Obviously, my name has to do with the tracker. So, I'm Alex Chalmers. Man, I love Warren. That's what this channel is going to be about. This is our shop dog, Louie. Oh, I'm hungry. Anyways. What we got going on is a D14 project. It's Alice Chalmers D14 1959. And we are rebuilding the engine. Um, I've had this thing for quite a while. It's been disrepaired for some time now. Uh, this is a, a used or a block that I picked up from an implement store or a used salvage yard tractor whatever implement store yeah um, so I used a brush hog with this uh, original head which has been gone through new seats new valves that's been taken care of uh, we got a new crank in it uh, the original engine had uh, no pal nuts on there and uh, the rod came loose on number three uh, came off uh, the piston stopped up at top dead center pretty much as it came back down the crank was turning hit the rod the end of the rod and pushed it into the block and it really wasn't that bad it cracked it but as hard as I run my machines because I, I hay too put up hay with antique equipment don't ask me why I just do and I try to make money with it um, so that's what this channel is going to be about. It's going to be about making hay, repairing now Chalmers. Uh, currently, I got a Minneapolis Moline 1960 445 and a 1949, yeah, uh, International Harvester M. So that's what we use on our do our hay. So this year, I'm going to take you along with me. Uh, we're hoping to get this house Chalmers done, ready for hay season. Then we're going to go out. Uh, bring our baler in, repair it, um, and, and while we're doing this, we work a 40-hour week. So I'm an ASC certified master mechanic, uh, and I don't know everything. Uh, trust me, I wish I did. Uh, and I'm just doing this for fun. Maybe I'll make some money off YouTube. I don't know. I've been watching Chucky and One Lonely Farmer and Moss Man and all the greats for the last nine years. And, I never got started on my own. I wish I would have, um, but I've been too busy watching YouTube. So we'll see how it goes. Um, so all right, yep. Tonight we're gonna get these bearings installed, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm hoping we don't break anything because I've already spent enough money on this damn thing. So, um, well, I'm gonna cut you out, and then we'll be back. So talk to you later. See ya. All right, welcome back, YouTube. So, as I said last time, we're doing Alice Chalmers rebuild here, and uh, so we're gonna put these new bearings in. Uh, we heated up the shop a little bit with the torpedo heater. It's getting a little chilly in here. It's about four degrees outside. So, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and do the middle bearing first, just because it looks like it's going to be a son of a gun. So, I'm trying to think. I have, I have another light somewhere. This light keeps dying. Um, so, uh, what I've got is, I've got a PT, which is a performance tool. It's a cheap, cheap tool brand. I usually find at O'Reilly's and whatnot. It actually works really good. Um, the item number is a W89222, W89220 camshaft bearing tool by Performance Tool PT. And it works pretty good. The instructions are junk. Uh, but I've 
been a mechanic for a little over 10 years now, so it kind of helps that I can halfway figure something out like that. I don't know if I still do or not. All right, so uh, we've got the middle bearing here. And per the book, obviously we gotta line up these holes here. So there's a hole. Make sure you guys can see this. So you got two holes there. So this bearing has to go in like this. I believe. Yeah. Something like that. We'll figure it out. So this is the middle bearing. It's got it's actually got three holes in it. It's different than the other ones. He's got two there and one there so those are for oil um, so we've got our we've got our areas cleaned out pretty good hit that one more time I just took some SOS pad and some brake clean and uh, really got in there and cleaned it out I mean I'm not going to polish it or anything, it's just a bearing in a 1960s tractor. I mean, they were designed to run forever. Now if I could find my brake clean. There it is. Um, this shop's a mess. I'm working 12 hours a day. Plus coming back here, working on this for a few hours. I mean, it never ends. But I enjoy it, so I can't complain too much. So this whole block, um, I actually set up in a in a steel uh, drum, 55 gallon drum. Dropped it down in there and a bunch of chemicals. Uh, it's probably some degreaser and a whole bunch of crap in there uh, to clean it. Got it really clean, uh, brought it in, blew it out, painted it, and then it sat for a while because I've been paying and doing other stuff trying to make money uh, so we got that pretty well cleaned out there's just some grease around the edges there so this got a new crankshaft in it and last night I had to uh, heat the old gear and I was able to pull it off with my 10 ton puller. Um, and it worked pretty good. I mean, it wasn't the easiest job I've done. But getting it back on was a son of a gun. We ended up uh, putting it in the fire. We got a little kind of like a uh, forage, not really a forage, but I just use it for heating up stuff. I put a bunch of blacksmith coal in there. It's, I don't know for another video, but um, put uh, coal in there and uh, get it hot. And then I can have different levels that you can put something. So you can have something red hot or medium or all the way to the top it works pretty good so i was able to get that hot enough and it slid on about halfway and it's this gear right here hopefully you guys can see that because i'm not very good at setting up my camera yeah barely let's get cold in here again there we go so we're able to slide that on pretty easily. So, yeah, it's gonna be hard to line up. But this has gotta go in here, like so. I just gotta eyeball it, I think. So I put it there, I mean, Worst case scenario, drive it back out.
it looks like it. Yeah, it's kind of an odd shoe pull. Well, we'll give that a shot. So with this tool, you get it. You have your short end. That comes there, screws in. You've got your the bearing end. That's got some lube on it. Um, so that will slide in. I got the bearing set in there where I think it ought to go. And of course it moved. Try that again. So we got that set in there pretty well. Feel that. So it's uh, I mean, if it wasn't four degrees outside, it'd be a lot better. Dang. On here again. Hopefully, I might have to kick the heat on. Hopefully, you guys can hear. So, we're going to slide this in without knocking the bearing out like that. Now, this is We can't get it expanded a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna expand, expand it some. This is my first time doing preparing an Alice Chalmer, so we'll see. I'll expand this up quite a bit. I'm always one of those guys. Now, where the hell did I put that tool? I had it in my hand five minutes ago. I know we all can relate to that. Give this a couple good turns. Yeah, that fits on there real nice. It's really good little bearing installer kit. Here, I don't know. No, if anybody's got better right here, let me know in the comments. And uh, see, I can't. Yeah. yeah. So I ain't even gonna be able to see it from there. I'm gonna have to do that in the walk. Son of a gun. Loosen this up, try this again. And we got our little wedge here to help. 
kind of guide us. <coughs> So I guess this is technically my first YouTube video, other than my one I posted like three years ago, which was some BS about intake manifold on a 3.8 liter. So I think we can see in here. We see the hole. We gotta be about right there. Drive it in. I'm gonna turn the heater on. I hope y'all can hear, but I'm cold, so. I'm running out of diesel. Man, I came back on. She's about out. Good thing I went and got some diesel the other day. I've got an iPhone stand and a microphone coming, so hopefully that'll help. I'll be able to move everything around a little bit better. I'm not going to be a regular star type setup, but it's a star. Long. I'm going to try to keep my videos about 20 minutes. Probably do a couple a day. See how it goes. A couple a day. <laughs> More like a couple a week. Look at that. I'm already busy. I got too much. Yeah, see, there's, is there another freaking one? Oh, I'm glad I looked at that. What does that hole go to? It goes up there to that feed line. So we're gonna have to get back in the book. Hopefully got the right bearings. And the one, number one thing about being a mechanic is your parts guy will always screw you over. At least that's what I've learned. No offense, parts guys. It's not your fault. Uh. All right. Let's look up.
Schwein. Silverhead. Tap it, gap it, this room. Blah, blah, blah. Rob guides. Bell Springs. Where is non diesel of our arms? Non diesel. Timing gear cover and crankshaft will all seal. Blah. 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 Oh, come on. All right, well, I'll bring you guys back here as soon as I figure this out. All right, so we were uh, installing the rear bearing first, and I don't know. Yeah, it ruined my bearing. The, oh, I ruined it. I don't think it was the tool's fault. I think it was my stupidity. So that one shot. So we got the shop warmed up a little bit. Mm. Gonna order another bearing, I guess, or a set of them. Oh, happy days. I don't know what the deal is. These ones drove out really easy. I don't know why. But, almost didn't replace them, but I plan on using this tractor, so I want everything to be 100%. Make sure they're the same diameter. So this one is 1.885. And this one is 1.885, so I don't know. That's weird. Uh, maybe we're going to try a different fitting. See if that helps. Hope I don't knock you guys off. I'm not really set up for a camera here. Set this over here. Well, if anybody has any better ways of installing cam bearings, let me know in the comments below. Cause I, I think I screwed it up, but it started to get hard and I was like, well, I'll just keep going. And lo and behold, everybody knows what happens when we just keep going. Boom, things come apart. See, I can't, it won't fit on this. This is the next size up. So it's gotta be that, that one. So we're gonna try to put the front one in and see that hopefully it goes better. I guess if I destroy them, which I don't want to, it doesn't matter now because I'm going to order another set of them. So hopefully this one will go in. It should. I don't know. Got some metal in there. I'm going to clean out. So get that on there. And our pole is right there. I 
might have started it crooked, I don't know. Okay. Bring that one up a little bit. But basically, it just rode up over the lip. I don't know why. I might have gotten it crooked. May not have expanded it enough. Let me get this hole lined up here. Now take our 22 wrench, wherever I put it, somewhere around here. Mm -hmm. I was watching Chucky 2009. He had some really good advice about buying farm equipment, which is what I do. Not as much as I'd like to, but it's pretty smart. And never assume anything. Quote the great Chucky, 2009. Get cold in here again. Got an easier way to line up the oil hole. All right, let's give that a shot. Keep that rotating. That one feels better already. I'm gonna check it, make sure it's not riding up. So far so good. It looks like it's going in square. So 
looks like we got our oil hole lined right up. I'm gonna give that one more turn. Give it one more turn before we go for it. And I mean, we're gonna go for it. Check it. And the book says for D14 149 cubic inch engine, drive the rear bushing in a quarter inch past the flush with the rear face of the block. Um, the front bushing should be installed flush with the face of the block with the oil hole line in the passage. So we're about a quarter inch away from being flush. And it looks like we're getting it driven in. I think that, that back one I screwed up. So I'm just gonna have to order another bearing. I broke it. We're almost flush. I'd say that's flush. We're going to slide this out chunk by chunk. Okay. Um, well, the tool's broken, so that's a good start. Cool. I guess uh, I hit it too hard. I don't know if you can see that. But uh, this is fantastic. Great first video. I feel like Chucky working on equipment now. Hmm. Well, I really want to cuss right now, but I'm not going to. Hmm. Well, if you want some, you lose some.
Well, it's a good thing we're ordering new bearings because it damaged it. Well, this is a kind of an expensive learning curve here. But this is why I'm doing YouTube, so. Yeah, at least I got the oil hole lined up. Yeah. Awesome. I got fresh metal in the engine. Oh, that stuff down there. It's fantastic. All right, well, you live and learn, right? Plan B. Uh, this tool is good for driving out bearings, but it sucks installing them. So, there's my review for PT camshaft bearing tool installer. Well, if you like this video, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Uh, if you have any suggestions on a better cam installation tool, let me know. I may end up having to take this to the machine shop. I really don't want to. It'll be a pain in the ass. So, um, we damaged one bearing. We drove it back out. We got the other one in. It got damaged somehow. So, And I followed the directions. It says with the nylon centering cone at the end of the first housing, drive the bearing into place. Repeat this step until the bearing is driven except for except the front or first bearing. To drive the number one bearing in, you need to move to the rear of the engine. So I started up here, I drove to that one, that didn't work. Screwed that bearing up. So, looks like we're going to order some stuff on Amazon tonight. Uh, use the nylon centering cone in the first bearing house at the rear of the block and then drive the bearing in. All right. Well, we learned. That was about $80, and I'm really disappointed. So, comment, rate, subscribe. I don't know if you can see me. Uh, I'll have a microphone and a stand tomorrow, so for the first video, I guess it wasn't so bad. So. I'll catch you in the next one.